Welcome back to Mine Operator. We are going to go over a technical review of the testing we did on the property in Arizona. The property owners shipped us a 10 pound sample of ore from their mine, and you can see it here uh, absolutely a beautiful ore, and you can tell it's got a lot of copper in it. We scanned each sample, and we were getting strong hits on copper and silver. We decided to crush the sample down, mix it, and we took six assays with the XRF and we averaged those assays together. Taking the average of six XRF assays of the head ore after it was milled, each ton of ore processed should produce 356 pounds of copper. And for silver, that would be 39 ounces per ton or 1,225 parts per million silver. So you can see that these are exciting results and we're curious if we could concentrate this ore, although we know that this is a refractory complex ore and gravity separation doesn't do a good job on this type of ore. But we were curious how well a 10 pound sample would run over the table and what the concentration ratios will look like. So that's what we wanna present to you. The ore was milled to minus 20 mesh and scanned with the XRF at a total weight of 9.8 pounds. The ore was then run on a Silver Springs shaker table and concentrated as follows. Number one cons, the primary cons, produced 980 grams. The secondary cons, or the middlings, produced 2,600 grams. The tailings produced 80 grams and the remaining 1.9 pounds was lost in the silts. The concentration ratio for the primary cons was four and a half to one, so 22%. The secondary, or the middlings, was a concentration ratio of 1.7 to one, or 58% of the sample. 1.7% for tailings and 18% to silts. With a grind size of minus 20 mesh, and using gravity concentration with a shaker table, the number one concentrates produced from processing one ton of head ore would produce 133 pounds of copper. This is from the average XRF assay that we took in soils mode. We took six assays and averaged them together. The middlings or the secondary concentrates would produce 27.8 pounds of copper taken from six XRF assays and averaged together. A total of 161 pounds or 45% of copper would be concentrated. Gravity concentration would lose 55% or 195 pounds of copper to the tailings and silt. For silver, with a grind size of minus 20 mesh and using gravity concentration with a shaker table, Number one concentrates produced from processing one ton of head ore would produce 13.7 ounces per ton silver based on an average of six XRF assays in soils mode. The number two concentrates or secondary uh, or the middlings would produce three and a half ounces per ton of silver based on an average of six XRF assays. A total of 17.2 ounces per ton of silver, which is 44%, would be concentrated. Gravity concentration would lose 56% or 21.8 ounces per ton of silver. That's a lot. In conclusion, it's apparent that significant losses would occur using in gravity concentration. It is our recommendation that froth, flotation, and leaching methods should be explored as the primary method of beneficiation. The value of the copper and silver present in this ore prompted us to head out to Arizona to see if we can learn more about the vein, the ore body, and if there is more ore present for sampling. All right, we've barred down, scaled the face, spent a little extra time barring down in here as well. So this is the vein that we want to sample. It's pretty wide. I'm gonna get a tape measure on it and get, get an idea looks like about five feet but we have mineralization on the right kind of looks like a maybe a 12 inch vein there and on the left 
a vein on the hanging wall. It's about 12 inches wide. Horse to waist, or so we think. Not sure if there is any good values in the middle section. So we're gonna take a channel sample, see what we get. The one on the left is that 12 inch wide vein on the hanging wall side. This is the horse to waist material. And on the right side, that is the 12 inch wide vein on the foot wall. Here are the assay results from the lab. Under the sample description, we have a uh, identifier in there to help us locate this where the sample was taken and how this assay result relates to that portion of the vein. So CSLV, that first one, is channel sample left vein. The second one is channel sample center vein. Third one is channel sample right vein. And the fourth one are hand samples or hand grab samples. None of the assay results are really that impressive. They're nothing like the samples that were shipped to us. However, we did locate a portion in the vein where some of those higher grade samples are. If you haven't seen an assay report like this, I'll explain it to you. Uh, take for example, under gold, AU, it's in parts per million, which roughly equates uh, one part per million for one gram. So it's one to one. There is a slight difference, but it's not much you'll see 0 0.07 parts per million or 0 0.12. An easy way to convert that is into grams. So 0 0.12 or slightly better than one-tenth of a gram to the ton. At the end, you'll see copper, CU, it's in percentages. So 0 0.061, that will be 610 parts per million or down at the bottom you see 0 0.675 that's 6750 parts per million or grams of copper if you don't know which test method to choose for your sample call the lab and they'll help you choose the correct method so let's run some math and calculate how much the entire width of the vein would yield in gold silver and copper now i'm going to show you how to calculate the values a common error that is done when evaluating assays is to add up the assays of the samples and divide by the number of the samples. If you do that and you don't consider the width of the vein or the portion where you took the sample from, you're going to have an incorrect value. The correct equation to use is taking the total width times assay divided by the total width of the vein that will equal your gold assay across the entire vein. So in this scenario, it is 0 0.48 parts per million divided by 5 feet equals 0 0.096 parts per million gold or grams per ton. Using this same equation, here are the values for silver and for copper. We already know the gold values at 0 0.096 parts per million. But for silver, it came out to be 12 parts per million silver across the entire five feet. And for copper, 414 parts per million copper, just under a pound, or 0.0414% copper. Now these values are pretty low and definitely doesn't warrant us trying to process this material. More field work is definitely in order from surveying and mapping the property to interval sampling and exposing the vein to maybe even a drilling program in the future. But for now, we won't be able to move forward on this property. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.